This guy comes in, staggering in, has a white t-shirt on, holes all through it, and the, the white t-shirt's almost uh, dyed red. And he comes walking up to me saying he needed medical. And I put two fingers out and healed him back and said, yeah, you probably do. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take sh I got no love for the fakeness. If you want to play tough and want to hate this, I'll always show up. Hello, YouTube. I've been asked to talk about my personal experiences at the walls. And, I mean, I've talked about it a couple of times, just, but just it's mainly just a brief thing. Um, really because I don't like talking about it too much, but, uh, I have to say that when the first thing I noticed, my first impression when I got there was the smell of state soap. I didn't realize this until I got my blanket and shirts and all that stuff they give you, prison stuff they give you. And, uh, it's just a weird smell. And after a while... You get used to it, and uh, you, you don't even notice it's there. But there for a while, it seemed like it was everywhere. Another thing that I noticed was, like in the summertime, if you're on a top walk, well, if you're on any walk, it was really hot because there's no AC there. But top walk was the worst, and... Uh, you just sweated and sweated, you know. It didn't even matter if you had a fan. There was this, when I was in R&O, there was this guy came by, Roby Hudson, I remember him. He worked in the property room, and he had stolen fans. And it was a lot easier to do back then than it is now. And uh, he was selling them $10 a piece. I wasted no time buying one. <laughs> but... In the winter time, it was cold, real cold, and especially if he's on the bottom walk. And sometimes the toilet would freeze over, have a thin layer of ice. And uh, I remember the old heads telling me about this, and I just kind of let it go through one ear and out the other because I really didn't. I thought they were just telling me stories, you know, but it ended up being true. And another thing that ended up being true was rats coming up out of the toilet. I didn't believe that until it happened to me one time. I heard the water sp splashing and looked over there and there's rats sticking up. And I think that the one thing I can't ever get used to, I mean, I mean people don't believe me when I say this, but those who have been there know what I'm talking about is the cockroaches, huge cockroaches. I don't know where they came from, but I don't know if they mutated or what, but they were huge, you know, bigger than the cockroaches I was used to seeing. Then there's the tunnel. Uh, the tunnel is basically a long corridor that went from one side of the prison to the other. It went from two house all the way over to five house. And I think everybody called it the tunnel, but it was just a long corridor. And I think five house and um, two house were built after the 1954 riot. There was a guy uh, named Joe, I think his name is Vadura or something like that. And he's interviewed about the 1954 right? He was there. And uh, I'll try to put a link in the description if you guys want to watch that. It's pretty interesting. You know, but to me, it's always interesting when somebody is talking about history that they've lived. And uh, maybe you guys will be interested too. But I remember one time being in the, the control center. And people who've been there know what I'm talking about. 
it's halfway between down the the uh, tunnel and you go into this open area and there's a control center and off to the right there's a little hallway that goes to medical the other way you go to visiting and I was waiting on a visit and there's some people who call me uh, cold for doing this but I wasn't being cold. He would have done the same thing if the situation was reversed. This guy comes in, staggering in, has a white t-shirt on, holes all through it, and the, the white t-shirt's almost uh, dyed red. And he comes walking up to me saying he needed medical. And I put two fingers out and healed him back said yeah you probably do I did that for several reasons one it was none of my business two I did not want to get anything on me that would hinder my visit you know that could have slowed it up and three the guards were already coming out of the control center anyway they saw him you know so it was it wasn't me being mean or anything like I said he would have done the same thing I mean, it's just the way it was. But I was told there's like corners in this tunnel, like a couple corners at each end. And if you had to if, to walk down and go around one of these corners, you always make a wide turn because there's no cameras and you don't know if somebody's on the other side. You don't know what's going to happen. So you want to have plenty of leeway when you're going around there so you can be ready for anything. And I mean, it kind of a uh, bad way to live, but that's just the way it was. You know, always on your guard, always being aware of everything. But um, I remember another time I was down on the, I got up early one morning, real early. And uh, so I remember going to the lower yard one morning, real early, like as soon as the yard opened. And the lower yard was mostly whites, even though there were blacks did come down there. It was mostly whites, and just like the upper yard, even though there was whites up there, it was mostly black. And if you was 150 pounds. 18 years old like me, you did not go in the upper yard by yourself. And I found out that, that out the hard way one day. But anyway, um, there's these like concrete steps and it's got like a uh, cover over it. It's like they use them as bleachers for people watching the softball game. And I was sitting there and these two guys come up with um, and sit down with bats, which immediately put me on guard. And uh, so I'm just watching them. And there's a guy running around the softball field, around and around. And I guess he'd ran about 10, 12 laps, something like that. He ran quite a few. And these guys went out there and did a number on him with these bats. But, um, so I just walked off, you know, it was none of my business. And, uh, just went on about my business. You know, I didn't know if they was gonna try to get everybody there and take them to the hole or what. But on the lower yard, they had this, uh, this, they called it, the. uh, uh shack that you know i wanted to say the shack it's like a canteen it's like a canteen on the yard is what it was and what you do in the canteen you would buy these five dollar cards and they had these coupons in them so you go down there and uh say you wanted a soda you pull off the coupons that would pay for a soda and give it to them and they'd give you a soda so I was hanging around this group that 
I don't know, it's probably 10, 15 guys. But I was talking to the Cecil, who was one of the main ones, and uh, he hands me this card, and he says, uh, hey, go get us a pizza and a couple of solos, young blood. So <laughs> I go over there. I misunderstood what he said. I get two pizzas and two sodas. <laughs> and uh, he goes, we can't eat all this. And uh, so he called some of his friends over and, and we ate a pizza. And, and when I got my car in, you know, I paid him back. He wasn't worried about it. He, he actually thought the whole thing was funny, but I still, you know, bought him a pizza and said, here, you know, you and your partners uh, eat this, you know. And um, he, uh, <laughs> but he used to always tease me after that. Yeah, Harv, you know how to count? You know what pizza and two sodas mean? <laughs> but uh, anyway, that was some of my uh, impressions of that place. And I mean, there's more stories. And I've already told you guys some of them. And, uh, like I said, it's just, it's a wild, crazy place. And if you was going to survive that place, you had to be mentally strong. And, uh, you had to be willing to stand up for yourself. I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, uh, I got to where I really didn't care. You know, you should say something out of line. And it was on. But anyway, I want to tell you guys how those of us at the walls were treated when we got to Farmington. So they started sending a bunch of us to Farmington Correctional Center on four overrides. So we get down there, and coming off the bus, or just, the staff is just treating us like we're these horrible people. And uh, I think I told you a story about my fan, dropping my fan. But anyway, we get up to the property room, and there's this old school guy. And I knew this guy. I mean, I didn't know him real well, but I knew him enough that he ain't going to take anything from these guards. And uh, so this, this sergeant starts yelling at us, this is not MSP. This is FCC. You will do as you're told. Do you understand? And uh, so I stepped between the old school guy and, and the sergeant, and I said, uh, "We haven't said anything. Why, you know, why are you yelling at us?" He goes, "Are you talking back to?" I mean, he just goes off. And um, and finally, I told him, "I said, look, you have your rules. We have ours." That's the bottom line. And he almost locked me up. He almost cuffed me and locked me up there. But, uh, so the black guy grabs hold of me and says, man, just let that go, you know? He's just venting, let it, let it go. So anyway, as we're walking to our housing unit, you know, they send us to, to our housing units after we got our property st straightened out. And old school comes up to me and he says, uh, hey, you know, I can take care of myself. And I said, I know, that's why I stepped between you and that, that sergeant. I said, you know, he, uh, he he had no call to do that. And uh, uh, it's not that I didn't want anything to happen to him. I just didn't want anything to happen to you. You go to a hole over him, you know, maybe even getting another charge, you know, it just, you know, and so we went on to our house, but that's how they treated us when we got there, and even in the housing units for a little bit, they treated us like that, you know, until I got to know us a little bit, but I, I, I just couldn't believe it, it was just like a complete change in the staff, and anyway, before I go, I've been thinking about making a workout video, prison workout video without weights. If you guys are interested in that, 
comment and let me know and I'll see what I can do. It'll be different than this because the camera is going to have to be moving and different things. But uh, until then. Make a